BYU TV football analyst Blaine Fowler back in with us as he is every week of the year. And uh, what did you think of Taysom Hill? I was impressed. He's exactly what we thought he would be. He's very athletic. He's got a strong arm. He displayed that a few times. And I thought that Brandon Doman did a really nice job of managing the fact that he had a freshman in the ball game, And he kind of tailored that offense to fit Taysom Hill's skill set. It was a great job. Why do you think Brandon Doman went from the booth down to the sideline to coach and call the game? That's one of the things. Without having a quarterback's coach, because Brandon does both, I mm -hmm. think he felt with a freshman on the field, he needed to be able to look him in the eyes when he came off the field and talk to him and get a feel for how he was feeling, what he was seeing, and you just can't get that done from the booth. And so it was a good decision. I don't know um, that Brandon wants to stay there forever because certainly you can see the game better to call plays from up in the booth. But the, the need to be there with his young quarterback outweighed the need to be up in the booth this time. Well, he was one of the two freshmen who had big nights on offense against a a poor Hawaii defense, but the Y factor from Friday night, Jamal Williams, and he got a lot of carries because Michael Elisa went out early on that first drive with a broken arm. Well, and the offensive line played really well in this ball game, created some seams, and if you give Jamal Williams a seam, he has got that shifty stop and start mentality. He can come to a complete stop, change directions, and get back to full speed very quickly. He was impressive, and I really like the way he finishes runs. And then our game changer, in this ball game was Taysom Hill, the freshman quarterback. An outstanding effort. He got it done uh, through the air, but more importantly, got it done with his feet running the football. This big 68-yard run displayed his breakaway speed. He ran away from the safeties for the University of Hawaii on this play. And uh, he's, he's a big-time player, a big-time talent, and it was fun to see him get a chance to play. Let's roll out this week's film session, but, but first let's yeah, put we, that we on can't for, we, yeah, can't we can't forget, forget to this. do... Our game changer always get a, gets a helmet sticker. So that that's helmet the sticker. first of what could be many for Taysom Hill. Yep, Taysom Hill gets a helmet sticker as first. Okay, all right. That takes us to film session, and let's talk a little bit more about his running ability. It might get him knocked out eventually, but until then, when he's running healthy, he's something to watch. Yeah, he really is. And BYU blocked so well. This time, I want you to focus on the two blocks that are thrown. This is Connie Akua Friel. He's going to come and seal out, and then David Foote's going to circle out of the backfield and seal in, and he's going to, they're going to create a great running lane on this call quarterback draw for Taysom Hill. Watch right there. Look at that beautiful lane. Two seal blocks. He's going to run right through that lane, and then watch. This is a strong safety right here on the right. He's going to outrun that strong safety and display that 4-4 speed. That's not a linebacker. That's not a D lineman. That is a safety that Taysom Hill is running away from. Well, here we sit on a Monday night, and, uh, and Michael Elisa is going to have uh, his arm uh, in a sling for a long time, if not a cast, because he breaks it on this run. And I want you to focus on the two guards, because I think the change on the offensive line, watch these two guys. This is Vitae and Anai, right here. They create a great upfield presence Anai is going to go make a block. Vitae is going to make a block. You also have Skyler Ridley right here making a block from the outside. This is the reason BYU was so successful running the football. You get the big guys downfield, and even though Mike Elisa breaks his wrist here, that's the kind of downfield blocking. This was an, a nine-yard game on that play, and over and over again, we saw those guards, and these were new guys playing mm -hmm. for the first time in Vitae and Anai. I mean, you could make a case for Anai being the player of the game. He made some great blocks downfield, but I thought he set a physical tone, just kind of a nasty mentality for that offensive line that carried over to the rest of his teammates on the O-line, and they probably played their best game from a physical standpoint all year. At least out six to eight weeks, so maybe he's back in time for the bowl game, uh, which shifts a lot of the load to 17-year-old Jamal Williams, and Paul Asike came in and ran with them force on Friday. Yeah, when the offensive line is playing the way they did in this ball game, it makes it really easy for these young backs because these are talented guys. And if you give them a seam, uh, Lasike, he is a physical guy. Boy, mm. does he finish runs. And Jamal Williams is the kind of guy, give him a little seam and maybe turns what would normally be a three-yard gain into a 60-yard touchdown. He's a very explosive player. What does BYU do at quarterback if Riley is back healthy? And if he's going to be healthy for Friday, what do you want to see from him starting in tonight's practice into tomorrow's to give an indicator that he might be? Well, I think he's got to be completely healthy by tomorrow. This is a Friday night game. Now, today, not that big of a deal on Monday, but, but if he can't go full go on Tuesday for a Friday night game, you've got to start to game plan around Taysom Hill. And so tomorrow, I think, is a big day for him. If he's loose and he can throw the football, 
um, then I think that he's the guy. I mean, Broncos made it very clear to us that if he's healthy, he is the guy. He was loose down on the sidelines. He was in every little house. Yeah, he was, like a he, casino It seemed host. like he was having fun down there <laughs> yeah. watching. And it's fun when you're winning by that yeah. much and you're dominating the other team. Let's get to know the foe for this week's game. The Utah State Aggies in Logan, Utah. Student enrollment of over 25,000. The Aggies will travel 104 miles down I-15 and play the Cougars here in Provo. Utah State's 4-1 this season with a 35-13 win over UNLV back on Saturday night. And uh, it was quite a spirited comeback for BYU to beat Utah State last, uh, last year. And it was Riley's finest hour finishing with that touchdown. Notables, Lavelle Edwards went to Utah State, played football there. Other alumni, including uh, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, Chris Cooley, Nolan Bushnell, the founder of Atari and Chuck E. Cheese, and the McCann girls, Courtney and Paige. That's what they got they're, going they're on. They're the most there. important alumni. <laughs> At so. least to me. All right, so who are we going to watch from the Aggies? Well, Chucky Keaton, I think it all starts with him, the quarterback. And he's played in some big games on the road. He's played at Auburn. He's taken his team into Wisconsin. And he's done very well Saturday against UNLV. Over 400 yards throwing the football and four touchdowns. And he's a dual threat guy. He's a, a throw first mentality. But he has great escape ability. And then Kerwin Williams. He's a little bit of a do-everything guy for these guys. 20 carries, 113 yards, and seven catches. He is the team's leading rusher, and he's also the team's leading receiver. So BYU will need to find Kerwin Williams, whether it's running the football or coming out of the backfield. They've got to locate him. Interesting, BYU's defense ranked fifth overall. They're number one in rushing D, red zone D. Number two in rushing D, number one in red zone D. That's going to be interesting uh, to see how those two offensive players can get things going Friday night, but what about for BYU? Well, Jamal Williams, we're going to see how he goes in his second outing where he's going to have to be the guy, and he was certainly good against Hawaii. I, I love the explosiveness that he brings, and we'll see how he does against a Utah State defense that is much better than the Hawaii defense they faced. And a guy that maybe he's not flying under the radar, but I just see him getting better every single week is Ziggy Ansah. He is a guy that changes what you have to do on offense. You've got to account for him now in every play. He is so physical so fast and he can dominate whether you're running the ball at him or you're going away from him he's so fast he can run things down from the backside. all right Blaine good job there's some excitement leading into this one between BYU and Utah State <laughs>